All right, the next item that does require committee action is repositioning of trespassing signs to apply to the terrace of the east entrance of MLK Junior Boulevard doors of the city county building. I'm speaking in opposition to this. To me, it seems like it is another way to criminalize homelessness. There are a lot of people who are not in shelters. I mean, shelters definitely exist in Madison, but there are many reasons why folks are not staying in the shelters. Um, some people are banned, some people have used up all of their days, and other people have different personal issues, whether they're based in trauma, or for whatever reason, they are not going to do well in a shelter sort of environment. Um, I think the bottom line is that it's not okay that people are sleeping outside, but that's a huge other issue. But the reality of life is that people need to sleep. We all need to sleep. Um, and this building is a safer place for people to sleep because it is well lit and there are security cameras. And so if people can't be here, where do they go? This is just an excerpt, the executive summary from the National Law Center on Homelessness and Poverty's recent report on the growing trend of criminalization of homelessness in U.S. cities. Um, I have had the honor of presenting um, to the Law Center, to the American Bar Association, and other um, groups that work with homeless people and work to advance housing as a human right um, on our efforts locally to recognize housing as a human right and to take affirmative actions to realize that right for Dane County residents. And one important piece of it is to make sure that we don't have punitive policies that um, prevent people from carrying out life-sustaining activities in public places when they have no other options. And, you know, we've, we have ordinances on the books, we have trespassing and things like that, and um, rules that prevent people from, you know, sleeping in parks and other public places. And um, I think it's problematic for us to enforce those against unhoused people when, when there's no shelter space when there's no housing for them to get into. Um, we need to be providing that housing. We certainly can't be punishing them for our failures as a community to provide housing for our residents. That there are ways to enforce um, ordinances related to you know, violent activity or other um, activity that could threaten or, um, you know, infringe on the rights of other people without punishing everyone for sleeping <laughs> when they have nowhere else to sleep. Um, so I, I really hope that we can continue to work on behavior-based policies, enforcing of ordinances, um, and other statutes that prohibit um, concerning behavior, but not the kind of lying, sleeping, eating, life-sustaining activities that we need. Um, I was really proud after long last that we finally have Handicap accessible, portable toilet, or porta potty, um, close to our building, and how um, ironic or just depressing it would be to finally, when there's a place for people to go to the bathroom, now we're pushing them out of that place that we have worked so hard, and the county is now funding to um, at least give them a place to go at night. Because yeah, so. one thing you'll find with criminalization policies is that they don't work, and they cost a lot of money, and and they make us look really bad. When we've said that we're committing to ending these types of policies, to go forward with them, is, is really embarrassing. <laughs> so. Do you have suggestions on how the uh, building maintenance uh, address the feces and urine and health issues related to that? I'd be a little bit surprised if the problem wasn't somewhat ameliorated by locating that porta potty um, right there because that was I mean one of the things that we that was obviously an issue is that people didn't have a close place to go so um, now that they have a close place to go I mean I, I certainly think people should should use that if there were some concerns with that um, we should talk about those but I think that that you know providing them a place to go is is, a, is the right solution with that kind of thing so. um, I'm on the board of directors for grassroots empowerment which is a statewide uh, organization for and about people with mental illness, including myself. Everybody on the board has a mental illness. And I hope I don't rattle on. I have some mental illnesses of my own. Um, I have a nephew who uh, was so severely mentally ill 
that he was one of the people you saw babbling on the street and talking to himself and, and arguing with what, whoever. And uh, nine years ago that, that was, and uh, because of um, the opportunities he had, he now has his own apartment. He's a member of Yahara House. He has a permanent uh, full-time job. Um, he's totally independent. I'm no longer his payee. And these are the things that can be the solution for some of the problems that we're having in Dane County or in Madison. Um, one of the things that my organization has uh, been able to uh, gain funding for, but it's not in Dane County, um, is um, um, a thing called respite centers. It's for when people who have a mental illness recognize their symptoms are causing them to go out of control or whatever. So they have that responsibility of recognizing that, but they need a place to go where they can stabilize and not have to go to the emergency room, which costs the county money. And um, so there's um, NAMI, I believe, and, and I believe uh, SOAR um, and uh, GEP have funding from, I think it originates from the federal government, I'm not sure, but we have funding to set up a respite center. And I can't remember, if, I think it's SOAR that has one, the, the funding for Dane County. First off, I have a question, anything Jim Raymond says, because this guy absolutely hates homeless okay. people. If you can just stick on that. And the uh, <laughs> reason I know is I'm the guy who's talking about the newspaper, my own business. He sat down his broom, walked 40 yards to where I was sitting, and picked a fight with me. And he accused me of stealing paper. I, don't, I believe a sign would be a bad idea. Here's why. Because one, it's like uh, my good friend uh, Heidi said, where are people going to go if they're not staying there? And I'm sure there is a small group that are problem makers. I know these people well. And uh, most of the people there, including my good friend Joe, just wants to be left alone so he can sleep. And uh, I think that, as they were doing, they have to address a particular problem, people, and we mount. Because there are a very small minority, very tiny fraction, that ever does make the problems. So you're saying people get repeatedly taken in. The signs would be a huge mistake, because here's what they do. They're intended to do one thing, harass people. And if people choose to ignore the signs, they're going to ignore them anyway. So what's the point? And as far as the feces goes, I've never seen any humans squatting down doing their duty, but I have seen a couple of dogs go by unleashed who are cracking the grass in other places. So I think he may be looking at the wrong target there. And uh, I have no doubt there is problem behavior there. I've seen it myself, but this is an exception, not the rule. And like I said, you got to deal with it accordingly. And that means you don't penalize a group like my good friend Joe, who just sleeps there. And that's all he does, he just sleeps there. You, you have to take it on an individual case-by-case -case basis. You can't, you can't judge any particular individual by the group. I've been working um, in Dane County with kids and families for 29 years now. Most uh, of the programs I've worked in have um, kids with mental health issues, so I have a, uh, a great deal of compassion for this issue, and, and like others before me, I don't come with solutions, so I'm sorry for that. What I do come with is um, information that's been relayed by my staff as well as others who are affected by this issue in this building. In the last nine months, there have been more complaints from staff about safety concerns in the building and from parents. And <clears throat> I've relayed these concerns to Captain Glady and to Dan and, and, and others. And um, <clears throat> what we're not talking about tonight is winter time. And that's um, a big issue for my staff as well as people coming into the facility. That Wilson Street corridor downstairs is very problematic, and it will be problematic again this winter. That's where parents, when they come to visit kids in detention, or pick up kids, or others who are picking up kids, need to come through. <clears throat> when there are open hours in the building, right now they're coming through Martin Luther, 
and that is at night up until the building's closed at the end of a meeting or whatever is going on in the building and are having to go through areas where there are, are homeless folks sleeping. This last winter was the first time that staff relayed to me that parents were concerned about their safety and were reluctant to come here to visit their kids in detention. I have a big, big problem with that. <coughs> parents need to visit kids if they're in secure custody, and that's, that's a problem. And as I said, staff have also um, increased the numbers of complaints. A lot of it is winter, but it's also during the warm weather seasons. So, will signs solve the problem? No, unless there's some level of enforcement or support or something after that. And so that really is going to have to happen also. The signs, I think, should be turned out so it at least gives some ability to respond. How that happens, I don't know. But something needs to be done because it is getting much, much worse in terms of numbers of people and numbers of problems. Has there ever been an incident between a homeless individual and a parent coming yes. through? Okay. Yes. What occurred is, um, this was winter, once again, going down that Wilson Street corridor um, on the ground floor. A parent, as they were leaving, was followed by a person and felt intimidated. And it wasn't just someone following. It was a person getting up and following that person. We didn't know that until she came the next time and said, I'm afraid to do that. Is there any other way I can access the building, which is like a Saturday or a Sunday when they can come up to visit? And there really isn't. Uh, uh, the card access now through Carroll Street for staff has mitigated some of those issues. I've got staff coming in 7 to 3, 3 to 11, and 11 to 7, seven days a week. Um, so staff can work their way through the building to avoid that during the winter, but parents can. I have a 3 to 11 staff Monday through Friday. She told me before I came up here that she dialed 911 last week because there was loud, very uh, noticeably loud arguing right in front of the building. Our windows are right there. They're very thin. You can hear all of it. And by the time a squad came around, it had calmed down. So that's a recent issue. Same staff last winter saw a person defecating outside, left of the building, um, where the pine trees and the bushes are. Literally saw. Are those isolated incidents? I don't know. But certainly concerning enough where I felt important enough to come here to directly relay that to you. Say, uh, we really have been talking about problem. We've been talking about symptoms. We've been talking about symptoms. Uh, the problem is like, hard-heartedness and inhumanity. And it goes deeper than that. It goes down to the very foundations, the very greed around which our society is organized. <coughs> and uh, first thing the Lord sees when he looks at <coughs> Madison, on Dane County, the first thing he sees is he sees homeless people huddled up against the buildings, sleeping. The Lord is really serious about this. Uh, this is a serious moral problem. It, it gives the lie to any notion that Madison or Dane County are really progressive. Now, I know not all you people here are progressive. Some of you, I'm sure, are moderates. But this is a serious moral problem. I'm speaking in support of... Um, the people that are utilizing this as their only means of, of um, shelter. Um, I feel very passionate about the fact that there is a huge gap in services um, that would enable some of these individuals to move forward in a positive direction in their life. Any of the um, housing options that are said to be available have extremely long waiting lists. There's lack, there's a lack of funding for any services. And I know this to be true because I have an 18 and a half year old son that found himself on the homeless scene and I have been everywhere seeking every service imaginable. And between wait lists and everything, there, there's nothing available. Now, the overnight men's shelter, bagged lunches, all of the things, all of the people are trying to coordinate to help the individuals in this situation is remedying things in the immediate. However, um, 
I believe this um, situation with the city county building vestibule was referred to by um, Jim as a place for people to camp out and um, referred to as a disaster. Um, my question would be, where is a suitable place to camp out if you don't have a home or a means to obtain one? Um, and typically when there is a disaster, the community rallies and fixes that disaster with united efforts. Um, and they, you know, clean it up and rebuild the situation. There is a foundation that needs to be um, accomplished here with service support services for people that are homeless um, and people find themselves in that homeless situation for various reasons and those are the services that um, have the long wait list and if you're in this situation um, the only way out is to have support and the only people that can provide support are people with a stable <laughs> foundation and organizations that collaborate to make those things happen. I don't think turning a sign is going to remedy anything. I think digging in deep and collaborating any and all services available within Dane County to provide people that I gave name tags because they're simply labeled as homeless. I think they have a voice and we got to meet all of you. I understand what Jim said about the amount of trash <laughs> that goes on, you know, that accumulates over the weekend because I have helped volunteer my services without paying to help clean up out there. I'm not out here homeless because I have a drug or alcohol problem. Like they got people that come up there asking us, you know, this, that, and other. And I want to show you a picture. I had a job with Springfield Housing Authority paying $27.50 an hour. And the only reason why I became homeless is because I had to leave my job because my wife's husband decided to burn up in the fire and his family up in the fire in our guy. Five months later, my wife passed away. Then I lost my job. Now, I got lucky getting that job because with my criminal background, you know, of trying to kill a Chicago police officer that was physically abusing me while I was handcuffed to a wall. Makes it hard for me to get a job. Mr. Johnson with the Boys and Girls Club tried to give me a job lead with Metcalfs. I can't tell you all the places I put applications in and don't nobody want to touch me because of my criminal background. Baby, would you stand up? This is my new wife, Jennifer. She's pregnant. And I sleep out here on this porch because of the security. The reason why she's not in the shelter right now because for us to use the shelter right now, we're cutting to our winter days. Come winter, where will I go? Nowhere. That means I almost died last year of frostbite from sleeping outside when I was in Iowa City, Iowa, 40 below zero. And they only got one shelter for 77 people. You know, I understand that you got trouble making. You got cameras down there that can see everything. Yes, ma'am. But the thing is, for y'all to do this, to ban us from this port for those that really need it. I'm not trying to make this my home. This is just a stepping stone for me to get to something better. All I'm saying is don't punish me for those that actions are inappropriate. Ban them. They got cameras looking at it. They know who's drinking and know who's arguing and know who's doing what. Ban them, but don't hurt those that need that. Like you, they said, block the doors. Yeah, the night that those tornado sounds was going on, yes, we were hurtled up in the doors. We use that for a place of security. But y'all got plenty of body bags because y'all don't want to, where we going to go? Nowhere. All y'all want to do is just, you know, you don't want to give us a warm shelter. You don't want to do nothing for us. Y'all say y'all want to do this, you want to do that, but you don't do nothing. I guess I got a short message. Just stop it. You're embarrassing us all. What's next? <coughs> You're going to send our newly minted police chief? with his rescue vehicle and assault the building. It'll make it. I can think we'll plow through this whole building and you can crush them all. And that's where you're going. We meet you then. I am one of the homeless that sleeps out front because I've used up all my days at the women's shelter. I was lucky enough that this was a cold winter that we had cold weather nights. 
where I could sleep in the shelter back then. And it did not go against my 60 days that I had. I just used those 60 days up real fast. I realized that there are a lot of problematic people that are out there. And to be perfectly honest with you, those of us who are not troublemakers are trying to police the situation ourselves if we can mm -hmm. and try to, you know, either get them to settle down, stop drinking, stop fighting, whatever, before the police show up. Because when it gets to the point where the police show up, it's miserable for everybody. But right now, there are a lot of people up there that don't have an alternative. There are too many roadblocks out there right now, too many restrictions on where you can and cannot sleep in the city. And to be a functioning human being and to try to hold down a job, you need sleep. The shelters are closed during the day, so if there's someone there in the shelter system that works a second or third shift, they have no place to sleep during the day. We're working on that. I serve on the Homeless Issues Committee and we've been fighting the fight. And I don't know what the solution would be but to make that a no trespassing area currently for the people that are up there I think is a big mistake because honestly they're going to end up just going somewhere else and getting issued tickets that they can't pay for because they don't have jobs. I happen to agree with Jim Reamer. Uh, I see what he has to go through in the mornings and we try to make it as easy on him as possible and he really is a good guy he's very polite to those of us that are reasonable individuals and I've never had a problem with him and his boss has also become very aware of the situation of the homeless in the city just in the past year actually the past nine months and Steve has been very supportive to me personally but to put those trespassing signs facing outward, I think would be a huge disservice until the city or county can do something about finding shelter space that is 24-7 for a lot more individuals. And we are a, an all-volunteer organization that does homeless outreach. I've been doing this myself for three years in Madison. And something I, I want to draw your attention to is um, something that was brought to my attention and I was reminded of this weekend when we were feeding folks on State Street. Um, a bunch of young women came up to me and were really afraid that you were going to ban them from sleeping out here because it is one of the few safe places for them to go when they are turned away from the Salvation Army. The Salvation Army has 30 beds a night and then after 30, uh, the rest of the women are turned away. So. The city county building provides a safe place because there it's well lit, there are cameras, and there's safety in numbers. And when I go to do outreach, I bring um, uh, a, uh, someone from the Rape Crisis Center with me often because that's a reality for women and youth and disabled people in this that have to sleep outside. It's dangerous. Um, you all can probably read your annual report on, on the criminal activity in Madison and Dane County. Well, the folks who are sleeping outside are extremely vulnerable to that. And the crimes that are perpetrated against them are, are very underreported. I bring with me, when I do outreach, first aid, I bring ice packs, I bring ibuprofen, I bring bandages because a lot of times people get beaten up. Uh, a lot of times I, I hold hands of people, of young women who have been raped repeatedly because they have no safe place to sleep at night. So I implore you to please not take this away from them. Um, it sounds like you have already put in place a porta potty, some reasonable guidelines for behavior, and for you to ban an entire socioeconomic class of people who are <coughs> the poorest and the most vulnerable in Madison from sleeping in one of the safe spots in Madison because of the behavior of a few people is just wrong. Um, you know, it, Heidi in her email to the committee um, brought up the housing and human rights resolutions both from the city and county. Um, and it's a, a good principal point to, to just think of 
you know, when it comes to how we deal with our public facilities as a society and as institutions of government. And I think one of the biggest tests of our character is are we willing to do and uphold the same values that we pass on the floor of the county board or of the city council um, in how we administer our own facilities and buildings. You know, we, we admit that this is a problem, we admit that the solutions aren't adequate thus far, and we're you know, working towards new things, day resource centers, more affordable housing, um, you know, public bathrooms, stuff like that. Um, but in the meantime, what are people supposed to do? Uh, banning them from the, the front of the city county building where people have said repeatedly they're safe, they feel comfortable, they're dry, um, would be an affront to our values in, in terms of housing and human right and in terms of our values as human beings. We keep hearing about the the you know need for bridge services while we open up the day resource center or bridge services while we work towards something else. I'd like to introduce the concept to you of a bridge problem. Um, while we continue to work towards getting more affordable housing, opening the day resource center, um, expanding on our job services and drug clinic services, um, our, our human needs services, um, we're going to run into these, these problems where people just have nowhere else to go. They're out of shelter days, they're out of space, they can't afford an apartment. Um, so we're going to run into these problems. So just like we need bridge services to, to deal with the, the issues of storage and bathroom, you know, all the other stuff, we need to look at the same thing for the city county building. The porta potty is a good first step. Um, adding another porta potty would probably help, honestly, just given the number of people I've seen waiting in front there. So is, you know, I'm I'm a little heartened to hear that that staff do find the people in front of the city county building to be such a problem. You know, someone who you guys, for better or for worse, gets to quite a bit. I I say I'm actually pleased with the the people that are in front. I'm I'm proud to call some of them my friends or people that I go to. Um, when we're talking about solutions to various problems. A, a lot of these ideas get generated by people that serve on the Homeless Issues Committee, that get involved by stopping you know, Brenda or I or someone on the way to the building, hey, what about this? Hey, what about that? Um, they're people who are, are good-hearted, well-intentioned, and are just trying to be safe, just trying to be dry, and just trying to, to move up in life. Um, so I'd urge you, please, do not put the sign facing outward. It's not a solution. Hi, I'm a homeless person. I have been for two years. I go by the name of Cat. See, Cat Run. Okay. This issue is very, very serious to everybody here. I call us the CCB family. Do you ever have a fight with your family members? Yes, we all do. I appreciated the porta potty beyond relief. I thought, these guys kind of are thinking for us. They're thinking for us. The dog on the premises, just so everybody knows, was for a woman with epilepsy. It's a service dog. We did get it away from us because we didn't know if the dog was really trained well, but we took care of it. We suffered our first eviction, mind you, an eviction for our fair on the square, three days. Nobody knew where to go. Where do you go? You get 60 days at the women's shelter. You don't get summer days at all. It is a 31 bed facility. Do you know what they do in the summer? They do a lottery. If you're number 32, you're out of there. Go find a new place to stay. You aren't purchased? Big wolf. Men have three shelters in the women. winter. Women have one in the winter also. They say 20 degrees. Okay, that's beside the point. We are a family up there. We do respect each other. We do have fights. I appreciate, I'm so sorry. I appreciate Tammy being here, Brenda Conkle, Ulysses, Ronnie, Cena Davis I see behind my shoulder. They all help us and support us. They bring us meals. People bring us meals, like chaos, on Wednesdays and Thursdays in the evening. They don't know. And I'm kind of disturbed by the situation today because guess what? We have Catholic Multicultural at 4 o'clock in the afternoon. We have Luke House at 5.45, 6 o'clock. So was this an attempt to get people not to show up? Because you get done at 6.30 at Luke House? This event could be gone because nobody would show up. What are you going to do? You're going to put the sign, no trespassing outside. Now you have other lawyers from other cities coming in, from other states. And they're saying, no trespassing? Does that mean I can't go in there? And if they loiter outside, is loitering trespassing because they're talking to their client? There's got to be, we respect each other and we respect everybody else. We don't show up on the premises until 4 o'clock. We're out of there by 6 o'clock by the time they're coming into work. We clean up after ourselves. 
as much as we can. There are times when they have concerts and everything down there and people bring their garbage over there. Does anybody video that? <laughs> King Street is having the concerts and they bring the garbage over there and making us look like crap. Three minutes, thank you. Thank you. I'm concerned that I'm not hearing anything about alternative housing or housing for these people. I heard Mayor Soglin last week at the Veterans um, Forum, Housing H Homeless Forum, and he said to everyone there that the city of Madison was going to take all of the homeless people and have housing for them by 2015. That is the goal. I haven't seen anything that looks like a plan for doing that. I'd like to see, you know, month by month what's exactly happening to get all of these homeless people housing by 2015. I know that a few buildings are being um, considered um, to be renovated or, you know, and that will take care of a few apartments or a few, um, you know, units for, for one individual. But that's not going to take care of this number of homelessness that we've got now, and perhaps an increasing number of homeless people because of the economy. And it disturbs me a lot when I see people on the streets who are seniors, who have disabilities, walking around maybe even after a hospitalization because the hospitals can't keep them very long. And I see them in the middle of winter. Um, this is obscene. These people need housing. Mayor Sondland knows it. I also know there are a lot of um, public and private spaces in the city of Madison or all of Dane County that are closed at night with, a light, with the security lights on, but there's nobody there. There's uh, totally empty office spaces. And I think some of these people could be put up in some of those office spaces if you're going to use the lighting and then they would have bathrooms accessible to them. I know this will cost more, but somehow we have to do something. You know, I'm a, I'm a progressive kind of conservative. And so I, what I mean by that is I think when you have a, I believe in a policy balanced budget, so to speak. So if we have a policy that's going to clearly cause some harm and some problems, then I would like to insist that there be in that same resolution a resolution to those problems that you create okay because you should stick you should at least respect the democratic open you should first try to do no harm and then see if you might actually make a contribution to our community and our world okay now the, you know in, in my lifetime i've seen uh, the city and the county, particularly the county who traditionally was responsible for making sure everyone was taken care of. That's what the county home out in Verona was about. And that, that bond was honored in a more comprehensive way until somewhere in, I think, the Great Society kind of upset that when we started saying, oh, the feds are going to take care of that stuff. And the state will pass the money to it. And we redefined sufficiency to be, well, what are we going to get a grant for? Right, Clint? I mean, that's kind of what our scope is. It's what we we would get paid to help too, and not to actually be fully responsible, as our constitution and our laws actually insist. I mean, this county and this city are in gross violation of their responsibilities, and we know that. And this type of a measure is a way to cover that shame, but is a way to uh, dress that up so when the tourists come, they don't see how embarrassingly uh, large our failure is. Uh, but we need to get real with ourselves and uh, you know it's it is as was stated before by someone you know this does get back to the we're honoring money and those who want uh, priority in acquiring money uh, over people it's plain and simple this town is run by real estate and development and it's got a higher rent growth and a you know, percentage than any place I know of in the huge terminal and that's our mass. That's our main industry. Okay, is collecting rent and developing buildings. And these, this restriction on solving problems at the bottom end of the housing stock, is directly about protecting the market value of all of that stuff. And we need to get honest about that and work for the 
the all. They're still supposed to be working for all, not just for some. So I would urge you to please do something about that. As a, you know, I'm an architect. I can't understand how you would go six years with a problem in your uh, your grate uh, up front with no maintenance, um, and why you wouldn't think to solve the problem maybe with a little chicken wire or something to restrict what can go in there. Okay. okay. You. So you know, just practicality and also adhering to real principles. I don't know. I'm so excited. It's election season, and not just because I'm running, but because there's mayors, there's people running for mayor right now in the race, and the hats are being dropped. And so, I do want to say that I remember distinctly being in a committee meeting where Bridget Manenak, Bridget once said, "Hmm, maybe we could inventory." all of the empty houses in Madison and the buildings when we were talking about finding a solution to homelessness in this city. I took that idea and said, we could do that statewide. So the problem that we're looking at right now with this funny as heck, I mean, if I was a cartoonist, I, I just, I should call a cartoonist. With the sign turning, Hilarious. We're talking about an eviction here. It's not a sign turning. You know, it's an eviction. Call it an eviction if it's an eviction. Everybody that's here that's affected by it is here tonight. It's the first time in any of the three years I've been active in this. Everybody's here. Let's talk about a meeting. You get rid of the sign talk. You get rid of the eviction call. And you have a meeting with the people who are affected in and around their behaviors. You don't have it on some list. Send some person and not talk about it. I'm here to help. Basically, we've been here before. This is the city county liaison committee. I really have faith in you guys. Thursday, October the 24th, 2013. In the audience, you got five people here that was at that meeting that spoke. At that moment in time, you had the chairs in the lobby removed. Your plan was to get rid of the people in the lobby as well as the people in the front of the building. You guys, with a clear conscience, came up with, no, 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 you put the chairs back in the lobby. And I want to thank you for doing that. The thing about this now is, I think you should allow it to go on while monitoring the situation. The police are going to rest. They're going to detox. You got your camera surveillance to punish the ones that are making a problem. Another thing I think you should do, I think you should somehow come to a homeless issues committee meeting where we work together and figure out how we can sound the alarm to make this a better spot here, this building, the homeless people, we in a partnership can make things better. How? We're going to alert all the homeless advocates, talk to them, let them know where all the portable toilets are located so they can start not waiting to the last minute but helping their partners whether they drunk or stoned or high or lazy to go to the four portable toilets that we fought so hard for to get around the square. And this guy back here, Every time I come to this city county building, it's clean, it doesn't smell that bad, it doesn't look that bad. One minute. To blow it out of proportion, you do not have to do that. Okay? Support all housing organizations. What I got here is what the police chief, Captain Glade, mentioned. This is the Homeless Services Consortium Guide. I would like to give each one of you a copy. If you want to reach out, and contact the homeless services providers. Go to the homeless services consortium meetings. They would somehow network with the homeless community, which would include all these people that are causing damage and trouble in front of the city county building. We need to put the word out that Tularian, Briarpatch, and Porchlight, they got their outreach services to come talk with these people and deal with these people. And I just wonder how many of uh, you guys have had a chance also to, as Matt said, to maybe sort of get to know some of the people 
who you see in front of the building every day. Uh, it may be even that as um, uh, that the person who does the juvenile um, justice uh, component here in the in the building um, could even have some of his staff uh, go and speak with some of the homeless folks and vice versa. Maybe they could get together and have a meeting um, and just become more comfortable with each other. Maybe there could also be some sort of training. I do think it might be a good idea to ask the homeless people to help find the solution themselves and maybe give them the opportunity maybe by supplying them with a few things to have a cleanup brigade or something like that, um, to be able to have the tools to more effectively um, deal with their environment and thereby hopefully make other people more pleased with it as well. We know that there are things like drug courts that um, do deal with people's you know, repetitive uh, behaviors and realize that people will fall into these things again. Um, so maybe, um, maybe a, a similar kind of model could be built into any kind of enforcement. There are problems with uh, job opportunities, criminal records, mental illness, foreclosures, <coughs> um, so many things that people just don't necessarily have a chance to get out of, partly because they don't have necessarily support systems. I frankly find that um, the ice on the sidewalks that people don't clear away, uh, that they're supposed to clear away within the 24 hours or what have you in the winter, is that ice has proven far more dangerous to me than any homeless person ever has. Thank you. <laughs> I've worked with uh, friends of the State Street family, helping folks who are on the streets. I am on the Outreach and Education Committee for the Homeless Services Consortium. Uh, if that list isn't long enough, um, I'll add another one. Uh, and that is, I am working with Captain Glady, who you guys heard from, and Municipal Judge Dan Colwell. Uh, and we're going to develop a homeless court of sorts um, to help folks who are on the street to start paying it paying forward by paying back um, their, their citations, their municipal citations, right? Um, but with an opportunity to do work instead of have to pay out of pocket, right? Because it's hard to have a job if you don't have somewhere to sleep every night. And one thing that just keeps racking my brain about this is if we change these signs and then sleeping becomes a citation that I'm going to have to start working with folks uh, to work back, uh, you know, we're going to have a restorative justice approach, and I wonder what that will look like in your minds to have someone pay back a citation for sleeping in a public place because there aren't housing opportunities for them. Just like to urge you and, um, you know, all the policy that you're involved in, in thinking more proactively about the long term. Um, I think that we have an opportunity with all of the debate and discussion in the city about this very, um, you know, long-standing and hard-to-solve issue. Um, that that we think of ways to get people housing first because it is cheaper in the long run for everyone. It is, and I don't think in dollars as bottom lines, but I know a lot of talking heads, figureheads, people who have power think about things in terms of dollars. And it is cheaper in the long run. Not to mention, it is healthier for everyone. The whole community is better if we have this. Yeah, so I, I'd really like you to think about what it will uh, look like to be citing people for sleeping and how much work myself and others will have to do to undo that. I'm one of the homeless that does sleep up there with my girlfriend. Um, things aren't as bad as you think they are. We're a small community. We do look out for each other. We do not try to cause problems for people. We even try to clean up the mess on the weekends. It's, it's really not that bad. It's, people get the wrong impression. They look at people that sleep out there. And it's not by choice. We're not there by choice. It's what happens in life. 
rough breaks, some. But we do get along. We may not like each other all the time, but there's nobody going to get hurt up there. Nobody's going to hurt others up there. Thank goodness we've got a porty potty. All that peeing and bathroom and that, they don't do it out there anymore. They used to use a tree that's in the corner. Some of them other places. We don't appreciate it either, you know, because we smell the stuff too. But the main thing is the safety of people. We are human beings as well. All right? Um, Dane County had a homeless rights committee for the homeless. You know, and it, I don't believe it's there anymore. I thought we had rights. Um, Jim, the janitor, you know, it's rough on him, and mostly on weekends, because garbage does pile up. Uh, there is drinking. We, once in a while we call on each other when we get out of hand, because we don't like what happened. But <clears throat> things are better when there are people in numbers. It's safer. I used to be the president for Occupy. I used to be the president for AIM, American Union Movement. I sat on the homeless committee. I've been here since 79. Things need to change for the better. And it's not happening. It's going to get worse if you boot them off of there. And that I know for a fact. I can only help people that want help. And a lot of them want help. They don't want to be out there, you know, because it's, you wake up in the morning, people see you out there, and they know, you know, it's pretty degrading. So, things really got to change. If you put them out of there, shame on you. Because I have had places, I have not had places, but when I've come in for a court date or whatever, stay had issues I've had, you know, I, I haven't had to see these people laying up on the <clears throat> up here. I got I got to I got to know these people. <clears throat> Is it acceptable for them to live there? To stay there? No. It, it, seriously it's not. I live in a tiny home, got the first one in Madison and we have we, we, you know, you must have just have us on display. You know, put gold around trimming around the house. And I, I'm kinda of flattered in some respects, but it gets annoying in other respects. We're over there on the east side. Anyone wants to volunteer? organization, OM build. I give respect. <clears throat> I give my medicine, I don't. OM build. We're going to build everyone up and you're going to get a spot. And I, anyone, I've told many and plenty, come out there and check it out. I'm telling my younger son, I'd love to have my older son come down here and get involved as well. You know, because he's soon to be homeless. And July 31st, 20, 23 year old son of mine, he's going to be homeless. <coughs> my sister won't allow him to stay there anymore. A younger son could be evicted any day, 19. Child, girlfriend, he could be out. You know, the housing authority could be told he's not on lease. So, there it is, okay? And I have been homeless myself pretty much since age seven. You know, my home comes from the else's home with a horse be called him mom and dad. If you're not my mom and dad, I have no interest in calling you that. But since age seven, when I was taken, my mother died as I was 11. I've been homeless pretty much my whole life. But you know what? I'm strong enough. We knock it down and we stay back up. I'm done. I'm really glad I came tonight because uh, what I heard that was really um, impressed me uh, was that there is really a community living in front of this building, a community of people uh, who look out for one another and try to create a safe space in really difficult situations or in a, in a really difficult situation. And I just have to wonder. Um, what things would be like if the city and county actually saw an opportunity in that, an opportunity to work with those people, to work with that community, to create a better situation, um, instead of this reflexive, put them off somewhere else uh, response that we see again and again, that we saw with the day shelter and now we're seeing it here. Um, it, 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 people come here because it's safer. And, and so there's no way around it. If you force people out of this place, you're forcing them into situations that are more dangerous, uh, into situations where there's greater risk of physical assault, greater risk of sexual assault, 
um, you will be responsible for that, whether you acknowledge that responsibility or not. Um, um, Ronnie says he has faith in you, and um, so I'd like to have faith in you too. Um, so I hope you don't disappoint Ronnie. Thank you. Well, this seems like deja vu because I was just testifying not too long ago, a couple of days ago, about the tip money in a room down the hall here. And uh, I know you were present at that one. And, and, and so this makes me think, here we were arguing about that TIF money and not being spent on that fancy hotel. And in the next day's paper, I read that that guy now is asking almost double the money. Now if we go along <coughs> with that, when we have all these unmet needs that you've heard tonight, along with the schools, then I don't know, I don't feel that I live in the place I used to think what Madison was. I was a social worker in LA County, and um, some of the people that I had in my clientele were females that were raped when they were on Skid Row in Los Angeles. So take heart when these people tell you tonight that they feel much more comfortable and secure when they're grouped together. Uh, because that can, that won't happen then, and they have a right for safety. We always think of that as a, as a primal need, don't we? I mean, you know, I do. I'm white and middle class. Now it's real hard for people to put aside the prejudices that come with that uh, uh, economic level, and so the other people are, you know, suspicious of the other. But everybody has a right to, uh, I think they have a right to a health care, a place to live, food, all these things we take for granted. So and what I'm getting at is these signs are an insult to people who are just trying to meet a basic need. And that money, and I'm glad I understand there are some people who are coming out more and more against that TIP project. Um, just think what that could do for us. And now, like Brenda Conco here, a wonderful person, trying to come up with those little houses. We need more of those. But look how much difficulty she's faced getting that off the ground. And also the homeless center that we were going to have. That town of Madison doesn't even want that thing. It makes sense to have it downtown and avoid that transportation cost that no one knew where that was going to come from to get them to that center in the town of Madison. So, you know, we've got things backwards and lopsided. And I'm just not comfortable if we don't treat people as human beings. And I, I just, I'm just, just praying on your consciousness, your, your consciousness, that you think about these people. They deserve better than we can get. Thank you. Uh, as far as the, uh, the breaking point that was discussed earlier, I, sorry, I don't think that um, six people being banned in six months is quite a breaking point. Um, I do, uh, I, I do agree that uh, the smearing of, uh, of fecal matter is an issue, but uh, but one thing that it uh, sp speaks to it to me is uh, this is kind of, this is behavior that is uh, seen when people are put in solitary confinement in in the prison system. This is a, this is a this is a very um, basic and, and visceral kind of. Uh, Response to being caged, and, uh, and and these and these people often have passed through that system, and so when you when you act uh, so swiftly to respond to that, I think you should take into consideration that it is police action that uh, that that somewhere um, in the past has has led to these behaviors, um, and so making and so responding with more police action. Um, I don't think that that's uh, constructive, and that's not the that's not the way that, that we should be dealing with um, the problem. Of course, everyone is speaking to the uh, rendering of services by the city, and uh, I, I, won't, I don't think I need to speak any more about that. I, going back to uh, these people feeling caged, you know, like uh, rent, uh, the, the, these the debts, uh, these instruments of um, colonial kind of oppression. Uh, this is that like the, I think this is a reason that, that they would feel. Uh, trapped as well, even if they're they're trapped uh, with with no wall, they're trapped by no walls, <laughs> which is sort of incredible. Um, that and so then we must uh, we must acknowledge that this our our country has invisible walls, 
that keep these people um, in. And 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 it's our and it's I, I believe it's the job of uh, of representative government to um, to tear down walls, both physical and uh, and otherwise. I'm a veteran of the U.S. Army for 24 years. Returned 19 in Vietnam in 1969. I was a sergeant. Right around the 4th of July, I was surfing in that and just looking about homeless people in our country. I came across a website that said there's 800,000 Americans homeless in this country. <coughs> I said, I wonder how many of them are veterans. It said 140,000 veterans are homeless. 140,000. Out of that 140,000, 77,000 are Vietnam veterans. 77,000 of people that served and fight for this country. And we're letting them fucking live on the street. That's bullshit in this country. We help all these other countries. Give them food. Give them everything. What about the people that served this country and fought for the rights we have to be in here right now? That fought for the rights so people can burn their flag if they want to. That's how we treat the veterans in this country. Why aren't they taking care of the veterans that serve and sacrificed? Why doesn't anybody care? One minute. I formed a company called First American Division Rescue. It's a nonprofit corporation, and the mission of the company is to get all the homeless off the street. I was going to start with veterans, and I said, that ain't going to work. We're going to get everybody off the street in this country. Because homelessness in this country, as prosperous as it is, is bull crap. <coughs> Can we do anything in Madison? I don't know. I get the money, 21 days, I'll have all these people in housing, out of your hair, out of sight. 21 days, you give me the resources. Give me the resources, and I'll get them all out in housing. If you can't help me, I'll do it myself. Take a look at these people. In 21 days, they're going to have housing. If I got anything to do with it, thank you. Your problem will be over. I'm going to tell you guys a story. A woman got, well, she didn't get the lottery, so she had to sleep out on the street. She got beaten up, robbed of everything that belongs to her. Almost raped. She kind of got away from that. But this is not one woman's story. This is two that I have told me this. And to be laying out front here in the building, it's more safer than any place. If you put no trespassing out there, where are these people going to go? They're going to face the same thing that these two women face. I know most of the people that hangs out up here, and they know I come up here once in a while to see what's going on. And I don't have answers. There's no real answer, but I know that no trespassing sign is going to cause more trouble than uh, just letting them stay there. But I do have one idea. Um, there's a lot of homeless advocates in this room right now. Sit down and talk to us before making your decision. Talk to the people that sleeps out front, which you have because they've been speaking to you. And let's see if we can find a different so solution with the problems that they have. The porta potty was a great idea. Sit down with us. Talk to us. 
with the homeless that sleep down there and see if we can find another solution. Okay, um, we've been at this nearly two hours. Uh, let's take a five minute break.